Well, first off, every first year student knows about vectors in the plane. In particular, each vector has, in the plane has two coordinates, x1, x2. Another vector y has coordinates y1, y2. We can define the dot product in this way, and we can define the length of the vector, sometimes called the norm, by this way, which is the sum of the squares of the coordinates. Now, Hilbert space is a generalization of this idea from two dimensions to infinity of dimensions. So in particular, instead of having a vector x1, x2, no longer in the plane, it's an infinite number of coordinates, all the way out to infinity. And of course, the y1, y2 has coordinates all the way out to infinity. Now the dot product, of course, has to sum all of these out to infinity, and the length has to be summed all the way out to infinity, and we have the condition that the sum of the squares of all the coordinates has to be bounded, or it's less than infinity. Ordered systems of numbers which satisfy these two properties are called Hilbert spaces. They're named Hilbert spaces in honor of David Hilbert, a famous professor of Göttingen at the beginning of the 20th century, and who invented Hilbert spaces, which were immediately used thereafter by Schoener and other people to describe problems in quantum mechanics. In particular, if you wish to study the solution of Schoener's equation, the so-called wave function, you need to understand what a Hilbert space is and to study this in the context of Hilbert space. And so Hilbert spaces are basic these days, not only to mathematics, but also to physics, not only quantum mechanics, but many other areas of physics.